Welcome. So good to see you all here this morning and uh, all those people who are listening on their, on watching on their TV as well. I, there's no one down here, so I guess I can go ahead unless there are community uh, matters that any of you have that are sitting in the pew. Anything? Okay. Please join me in the call to worship. Psalm 9, 1 and 2. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Please join me in the hymn 802, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Prayer of confession. To you, O God, 
All hearts are open to you, all desires known. We come to you confessing our sins, those we are aware of and those we are not. Forgive us in your mercy and remember us in your love. Show us your ways, teach us your paths, and lead us in justice and truth for the sake of your goodness and Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. By water and the Holy Spirit, God gives you a new birth. And through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God forgives you all your sins. The glory of mercy and might strengthens you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
Beautiful. Thank you. Prayer for Illumination. Holy One, we long to know your truth. Prepare our hearts to hear your word and give us understanding. As we listen to the stories of your ancient people, may we be inspired to share our stories of your presence day by day. Amen. Okay, the scripture today, one is Isaiah 25, 1 to 9. Praise for deliverance from oppression. O Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things, plans formed by old, faithful, and sure. For thou hast made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify thee, Cities of ruthless nations will fear thee, for thou hast been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress, a shelter from the storm, and a shade from the heat. For the blast of the ruthless is like a storm against a wall, like heat in a dry place. Thou dost subdue the noise of the aliens as heat by the shade of a cloud, so the song of the ruthless is still. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of fat things, a feast of wine on the lease, of fat things full of marrow, of wine on the lease well refined. And he will destroy on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the vein that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever, and the people, Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be want. The, the Lord, Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. You are broad and you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and my crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, 
If there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the singing of the hymn, There is a Place of Quiet Rest, number 824. to you and peace from God our Creator and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. Today we remember the promise that the prophet Isaiah spoke long ago to God's children who had been banished from their homeland and from their families. We remember the words of God's prophet, hear them again today in this community and in this world, which is suffering the anguish of violent discord, separation, and death. Norms we once took for granted have crumbled into dust. International understandings and laws regarding human rights and freedom, norms regulating the sovereignty of nations, the conduct of nations in times of war, like the attempt to avoid civilian casualties, all of these pacts and treaties and understandings which were never perfect nor entirely enforceable, are nevertheless dust. 
To name the world's pain is necessary and urgent. The pain of Israelis who watch their neighbors, friends, families, and children slaughtered and kidnapped by terrorists. The pain of Palestinians who very likely do not support the extremism of Hamas, now completely cut off from everything they need to survive, having also lost mothers and children and sons and daughters. The pain continues in Ukraine and Sudan and Hungary and Guatemala and Venezuela and Haiti. I read a poem this week about the poet tracing their hand over the atlas of the world and asking, where does it hurt? And the answer was whispered, everywhere, everywhere. The pain of war, displacement, exile, loss, of living under a totalitarian regime or experiencing trauma or starvation, these are pains that linger for generations. They don't last a week or a typical news cycle. They linger in bodies and communities and minds and hearts. I was grateful for the prayer of lament that was sent around to all of us this week by email because it gave me a place to start, words to begin talking with God about all of this pain and my feelings of helplessness. We cannot give in to the inertia of being overwhelmed and helpless. At the very least, we must lament communally and create safe spaces to share griefs and fear. In every circumstance like this, in all times of war and terror and exile, the church throughout the centuries has remembered the prophet Isaiah's words so that the promises of our eternal God would sound against everything that leads to destruction and death. There are no words sweeter or more comforting, especially when we hear them in the midst of terror and unimaginable loss. Especially then because it is in the midst of those times when God seems most absent, most apathetic, most guilty. In the midst of times like these, Isaiah reminds us that God is most present where God seems most absent. In the most God-forsaken situations and places and events, that is where God is at work, hidden in what seems to be only evil and utter devastation. I was reminded of this again, I think it was just yesterday, During an interview I was listening to on NPR between the host, Ari Shapiro, with a rabbi from Los Angeles and an imam from Kansas. Maybe you heard it too. Ari Shapiro asked each of them to talk about what was going on in their own minds, in their hearts, in their communities, and what they were going to preach to their gathered communities this weekend. What message were they going to share And what parts of their sacred texts were they turning to in this awful time? The imam talked about a section of the Quran that speaks about being at war and about how when your side is suffering and grieving the loss of loved ones and land and possessions, you must pause to remember that your perceived enemy is suffering those same losses. They, too, are experiencing loss of life and dignity and life and hope and land. He was going to take that message to his people this weekend. Remember not just your own suffering, but the suffering of others. 
The rabbi said she, being uh, the beginning of the Jewish New Year, was reflecting on the first chapters of the book of Genesis. And especially what was capturing her attention was the chapter about the sixth day, when God creates human beings. And Adam and Eve find themselves in the Garden of Eden. In the ancient Midrash, the commentary on the Torah, the rabbis wrote that when the sun set on their first day of life, Adam got really scared because he'd never seen darkness before. And he started to weep and scream and cry. And Eve came over and just sat across from him and cried with him all night until the dawn came. It's such a beautiful, powerful statement about how there is always a dawn that comes after even the deepest, most frightening darkness. And our job as human beings is to come alongside and sit with one another and hold each other in the sorrow until we are able once again to walk toward the light. This passage means so much to the rabbi at this time because she clings to the hope that there is another way. Despite all evidence to the contrary, despite decades and decades of failed treaties and failed negotiations and reignited armed conflict, she trusts and she knows there is another way. And she knows it because of God's promises because of the ancient stories, because of the work of peace building that she does with the imam from Kansas and with other rabbis and Muslim and Christian leaders from all over the world. A Muslim doctor she is very close to, who works at a hospital in Tel Aviv, told her by phone yesterday, a day of seeing hundreds of the wounded and the dead, that in her mind, the divide is not between Israelis and Palestinians, but between those who believe that violence is the answer to their conflicts and those who believe that, that there is another way. She calls on everyone to reject this reductive idea that Jews and Arabs must be enemies forever and instead create a different way by coming together and first sitting with one another, crying with one another, affirming each other's humanity and suffering. A different way rooted in the promises of God. God will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people. He will take away from all the earth for the Lord has spoken. The Lord has spoken. And when the Lord speaks, it is done. Six centuries before even the birth of Jesus, God spoke through Isaiah so that those who had been violently forced into exile would know to whom they belonged. Isaiah gives to those who think that all is lost a word of hope. You belong to the one who made the heavens and the earth by speaking it into being. You belong to the one who puts breath into every living thing. You belong to the one who has given you voices to lament and to give thanks. I will exalt you, I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things. Plans formed of old, faithful, and sure. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall want for nothing. God has spoken these promises for the obedient and for the defiant, for the faithful and the fugitive, for those who hunger and thirst for righteousness and for those who steal from the markets so their children can eat. 
The promise is for all on that holy mountain, for every nation under heaven. For at this feast, even ancient enemies will be reconciled. In the sweetness that comes from one loaf broken, one life shared, one beautiful table where mercy flows like living water. To a desperate and starving and forsaken people. Through Isaiah, God proclaims, you will be fed a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. When death and destruction pursue them, Isaiah declares that those who trust in their own might will fall. Cities of ruthless nations will be in fear. The ruthless will huff and puff, but they will not blow this house down. The psalmist trusts that the shepherd will comfort and protect the flock with his rod and his staff, will lead them to still water and the greatest, greenest grass, will restore their souls to them, souls that have been scarred by fear and terror. God is, in fact, opening up a wide new future for all people. And it is the future for which all the world has been waiting, for which we wait. In our deepest fears and in our most painful losses, God comes to us and wipes away our tears, swallows up death, removes the shroud that covers us in sadness and grief and mourning, restores our souls so that we ourselves can be comforters, so that we can get about the work of rebuilding, the work of being human, of worshiping our God. Isaiah speaks of a plan formed before time, meaning this is not plan B. It's been plan A all along. He speaks of a promise of a feast for all nations and peoples, a feast, according to our psalm, that takes place not when the conflict is over, but in the midst of the conflict, while surrounded all sides by our perceived enemies. God's flock will be so safe that they will recline at ease and be nourished. The children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are his. There's no doubt about that. But so are all the children of this earth. Israel will announce the banquet that God is preparing so that out of those valleys that lie deep in dark shadows, all people of the world will be drawn up that holy mountain, drawn up as they look to this radiant one who is the author and giver of all life. That's the eternal promise. That is what God has spoken into being. The God who created us and all things of the earth will restore and replenish, protect those in exile, be a refuge to the poor and the needy, providing shelter from the rain and shade from the burning sun. The conquering oppressive empires will fall. Every tyrannical power that thinks it is God, even now. Every despot that deals in death and destruction will see its power meet its end. Promises for all God's children so all might live in hope. The promise that God is our refuge and shade means peace. The shelter God provides does not remove the violence of the nations, but preserves and protects in and through the violence. Israel does not escape the violence in Isaiah or in any other time, but endures and overcomes in the violence. To be a refuge and shade means that God's self is absorbing the violence. This will happen again and again until that ultimate moment of terror 
when God himself, Jesus the Savior, absorbs all the world's evil and loathing and terror into his own body on the cross and then rises from the grave, still bearing his wounds, yet whole, restored, alive, to be our way and our peace and our hope. Like the dawn that broke open on the seventh day, and all of creation rested and delighted in God's love. This is our hope and our call until all the world is fed at the eternal and ever joyous feast. Amen. In Jesus, God has poured himself out for us, giving us everything we need. Our worshipful offerings are an expression of our thankful hearts and an acknowledgement that all things come from God and all things belong to God. We give because we have first received.
Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. Form us into the body of your beloved, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You are invited to share your joys and concerns, your prayers and your thanksgivings, your gratitude. My cousin Samantha's husband, Tom, has begun his oral chemo treatment for um, his diagnosis of brain cancer. He'll be doing oral chemo treatments for the coming year, um, off and on for periods of time for a week or two and then a week or two off. So continued prayers for Tom and Samantha um, and my for my coworker, Heather, as she is going through a month-long radiation chemo treatment. Thank you. Uh, two things. I am grateful for singers. Yay, singers. Thank you. <laughs> the thing is that um, another, another joy at 1.30 this afternoon, down by Council Rock, um, they will be dedicating a new uh, historical marker for Council Rock, um, which is a big deal. Um, excuse me? Oh, yes. Ex historically accurate. Uh, thanks to a lot of work by Will Walker. Um, a lot of research, a lot of work, a lot of working with... Um, different representatives, including people from the Haudenosaunee uh, nations, uh, to come up with the, the more accurate uh, depiction of what actually happened here and what the results were all across you know, the western part of the United States and the southern tier, uh, western part of the New York state and, and, and the southern tier. So um, if you're available, come re rejoice with him and us in, in that retelling. Um, and there's also a book coming out by friends of ours in working on it in, in Albany, too. So there is yet more truth to break forth from historical research. How's that? Just thank you for your sermon. I just want to recommend a book that I borrowed from the library yesterday. The title of it is Malivos. It's a title, it's the name of a village in Greece by John Webb. And it is an account of what a tiny village and what some people can do with refugees that started with a few boats, became hundreds of boats and hundreds of refugees from all sorts of people escaping their country, which happens everywhere, but it's um, redemptive in that what this small group of people could do for the people who have made the trip in awful boats to get to this village and, and to send them on their way, hopefully. So I highly recommend it. And it's available for free from the library. I had a great joy the last two weeks. Our family from Mesa was here, Tim and family, and Sarah's still here. Trusting in the transformative power of God's loving spirit, 
We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. For the church of Jesus Christ in this and every land, that all followers of Christ share the mind of Christ and strive to live together in peace, staying firm in the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For green pastures and still waters and all the beauty of the natural world that creation flourishes and humankind lives in right relationship with all you have made. We give thanks for scientists and advocates who speak boldly and urgently about the dangers that face us and also give hope in providing new ways of thinking and being in regard to our warming planet. May we heed their prophetic voices and work together for the common good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world and all who hold positions of authority, that they govern in accordance with God's vision of justice, providing shelter and refuge to all in need, striving toward the goal of peace for all. O oh God, we are broken and in anguish over the terror attacks by Hamas and Israel, by the horrific loss of life, for the anticipated response which will also cause unimaginable suffering, loss, and grief. We pray for those in Israel and Palestine who long for peace, work each day for peace, for those who feel only anger and a desire for vengeance in this moment, for those who are frightened, despairing, or who have lost hope, for those who have forged ties and friendships across ethnic and religious divides and now feel the effects of torn allegiances. We pray for family members all over the world who await news of loved ones who live in harm's way. We pray for all who have been displaced and have nowhere to rest. Be with all your children. Gather them as in your promise to the exiles around your gracious feast that creates peace. Help all of us to come to you with our prayers, laments, cries, and petitions, for you are the God who hears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are experiencing valleys of illness and grief and shadows, that they may be healed and comforted and find rest in the presence of the Good Shepherd who walks beside them and carries them when they need it. We pray especially for Doug, Ed, Emma, Peter, Tom, Samantha, Heather, and all those we name before you now in the silence of our hearts or out loud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this community of believers, that wherever there is conflict or discord, the love of Christ may keep them united and make them mindful of all that is true, honorable, just, pure, pleasing, commendable, and excellent in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, this is a grateful gathering of your children who see you at work in so many ways in their lives and in this community, and we lift up these gratitudes. The thankfulness for family visiting one another, for Sarah, Gratitude for those who lift their voices and sing in our worship 
so that you may be glorified, O God, and so that the gospel may be proclaimed in many ways. Gratitude for communities and small groups of people who make such a big difference in the lives of the most vulnerable, especially refugees, the hungry, those without shelter. As we read and hear about such communities, may we be inspired and find hope in what they have done before us. Gratitude that history be told more truthfully, that tradition can be reimagined, and that stories can be told that more accurately represent those who experienced times long ago or in more recent past, we give thanks for the event today at Council Rock that will finally tell a more true and accurate story of what happened in this place by those who experienced it and their descendants. Thank you for all the ways in which we learn the truth of our history. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the beloved saints who now rest in your mercy, that their faithful witness guides your church until the day we join them at your heavenly feast. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your unending love and amazing grace, through Christ our Savior. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Let us stand and sing hymn 645. Sing praise to God who reigns above.
Lord, conqueror of death. We remember with gladness how on the day of resurrection you appeared to your disciples in your risen power and said to them, Peace be with you. Speak that word of peace to the hearts of all your children. Lift us above our doubts and fears. Help us so to practice your presence and to rest upon your victory that your peace may be known over the whole earth. Go now in Christ's peace, trusting that God is at work in you. Thanks be to God. Thank uh-huh.